In this short video, we're going to be talking about an algebraic technique that is useful when you have an expression with two terms, and at least one of the terms has a radical. And we're talking about square roots here. So two-term radical expressions would be expressions like the ones shown here, where at least one of the terms has a radical. Now both of them might have radicals. It may be the first one. You may have a constant outside the radical. Uh, all of those are two-term radical expressions. And we want to look at fractions in particular that have these two-term radical expressions, and we'd like to simplify them. Now depending upon the problem we're trying to solve, and mind you, a lot of these problems that we want to work with, we will not see until we get to calculus. But we can take these fractions that have the two-term radical expression and rewrite it as an equivalent fraction where the either there is no radical or you have a radical, but it used to be in the denominator and now it's in the numerator or vice versa. And this process is called rationalizing because an expression that has a radical in it is irrational. And uh, so an expression with no radical would be rational. And so that's why it's called rationalizing the denominator or rationalizing the numerator. All right, so why do we do this or how do we do this? It's the idea of the product of conjugates. If I take a radical expression and multiply it by its conjugate, the product will not have a radical. And because if you take an expression and multiply it by its conjugate, so we treat it as a binomial, multiply it by its conjugate. Conjugate has the same idea as it did with binomials. Uh, the first term stays the same and we change the sign in front of the second term, then that will be the difference of two squares. And of course, if you square a radical expression, then after squaring it, there is no radical expression. And now you have a rational number. So <clears throat> let's look at a few more examples. Uh, here I have x minus radical x times its conjugate. So I'll get x squared minus radical x squared, and radical x squared is just x. Here I have both terms with a radical, but when I multiply by its conjugate, I'll square both terms and take their difference. And so radical 3 squared is just 3, radical 5 squared is just 5, and 3 minus 5 makes negative 2. Now I have to be careful if I have a number outside the radical to remember to square both things inside. So 2 squared will be 4, radical 3 squared will be 3, 4 times 3 will give me 12. So I'll have 12 minus 4 squared, which will give me negative 4. So to rationalize the denominator, we're just going to multiply top and bottom by its conjugate. So here's an example. I have 2 over 4 minus radical 3. So I'll be multiplying top and bottom by 4 plus radical 3. Now I have to remember to treat this 4 minus radical 3 as a group, as a binomial. So uh, on the top, I just use the distributive property. On the bottom, I'll have the difference of two squares. And then I'm going to leave the top in factored form. Uh, there's no other factorization possible. And if there is any simplification, it'll be clear because it's already factored. But after I subtract 16 minus 3, I get 13 and no factorization possible, so no simplification is possible. All right, here's another example where I have uh, two two-term radical expressions, one in the numerator and one in the denominator. We're just going to try to rationalize the denominator. 
And so I want to notice one thing that here it's rare that you can uh, rationalize both the numerator and the denominator at the same time. So in example one, we have now a rational denominator, but the numerator is irrational. And so here we're probably going to have uh, or continue to have an irrational numerator, but our goal is to rationalize the denominator. So we multiply top and bottom by one minus radical two. Now in the numerator, I have to use FOIL. This is the product of binomials. And in the denominator, I have one minus radical two squared, and radical two squared is two. Uh, after I multiply out, in the numerator, I do have like terms, so I'm going to go ahead and combine those like terms and I'll subtract 1 minus 2, which gives me negative 1. Now, there's nothing wrong with this answer. It's just a little awkward to have the negative 1 here in the denominator. So uh, to simplify this further or to make it look e make it easier to work with, uh, I'll go ahead and divide each term by negative 1, which just changes their sign. So now I have a negative 1 plus radical 2. Let's look at some more examples. Uh, now I have a denominator where I have a number in front of the radical 2. And so I'll go ahead and multiply top and bottom by its conjugate. And I'll still have to use FOIL in the numerator. And so again, I have when I square the first one, that's I'll have to square the 2. That gives me 4. Squaring radical 2 gives me 2. And then subtracting the square of radical 3, which is 3. After I use FOIL here, and the properties of radicals, that's how I got 2 radical 5 times 2 radical 2. I'll multiply the 2 times 2 to get, well, that's a mistake. I have to fix that. 2 times 2 should be 4. It should be 4 radical 10. So let's go ahead and fix that. So that should have been a Four radical 10 and then I'll have 2 radical 15 that's right 6 radical 2 and 3 radical 3 but there's no like terms here so I'm done with that and then I'll have 8 minus 3 so let me make my correction again that should be 4 radical To make the corrections when, when all of this lives. It's always good to read through these things. All right, so now I have uh, an algebraic expression 1 minus radical x, uh, but the uh, technique doesn't change. There's really no difference. Multiply by its conjugate, make my correction. And so then I'll get this algebraic expression of my answer. And I'm going to leave it that way. For in this case, we don't really know if we've rationalized it, but there is no radical there. The reason why I say that is we could put in a rational number for x, and we would still have an irrational uh, denominator. But in this case, when you're looking at an algebraic expression, rationalize just means rewrite as an, an equivalent way where there is no radical sign. All right, so let's move on to examples where we're rationalizing the numerator. So now our focus is going to be on multiplying the expression top and bottom by the 
conjugate of the numerator. So we need to focus a little bit. Here I should be multiplying by 2 radical 5 minus 3, top and bottom. Let's see if I got the correct multiplication done in the bottom now. And sure enough, I did the 4 radical 10, which is good. Uh, might as well check the other ones. I'll have a minus 6 radical 2, a uh, minus 2 radical 15, and then plus 3 radical 3. And then here I have the difference of two squares, so I should have two squared, which is four. Radical five squared is five, that's the first term squared, and then minus nine. Which I can simplify as just 11 over all four of those terms, which cannot be simplified any further. There are no like terms. Here's a, a type of rationalization that you need to do for a new number of different applications in calculus. So let's just work through it. We're going to rationalize the numerator. And so I'll multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of the numerator. And then I'll get a new algebraic expression where the radical is now in the denominator. But I can also see that I have a form of 1. I have h minus 1 in the numerator, h minus 1 in the denominator. So after I simplify that, in the numerator I just have 1. And in the denominator, denominator I have radical h plus 1.